Okay, hello and welcome everybody. Um, welcome to this Sova Middle East Bite Size event. Um, today we're actually live from London. Um, so yeah, bit of a bit of a change there, but um, still sort of focusing on Middle East content. And next month we'll be back doing it live from um, Dubai again. So again, thank you all for coming. Nice to see lots of familiar faces. Um, it really is becoming a, a great community here that we're creating. So again, thank you for your contributions and thank you for attending. So as most as you know, most of you know, I'm Becky, a chartered occupational psychologist, and I'll introduce John shortly. Um, so we are obviously running a series of events each month. This month we're talking about innovation in assessment and what we're going to be doing is something a bit different this time. We're going to be showcasing to you our top five Sova products. So we're going to spend a few minutes on each product, um, showcase them, talk about some of the features and then open up the forum to have a discussion and to then really talk about well how can we implement new innovation? You know, what are some of the challenges that you need to think about? So again, as I always say, please do write um, questions in the box. Please do comment. If you would like your camera turned on, please let us know. We're more than happy to have this very interactive session. Um, so I think, I think that's it for the introduction. And yeah, I'll hand over to John now just to do a very, very high level overview of SOVA. This is just for the new people that we've got joining, just so you know who SOVA are. And actually, John, if you introduce yourself as well. Thanks, Becky. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, Jonathan Rook, um, MD of uh, SOVA Middle East. Uh, we're into our third year of operation um, in the UAE. Um, and as Becky mentioned, yeah, we've been running these events on a regular basis just to sort of push some of our content out into the market to let people know some of the things that we're working on. And hopefully today um, will be informative in terms of some of the, uh, the tools that we're working with. Okay. So the agenda today, which has got, got some welcome and introductions, which we've done, we'll talk a bit about assessment trends and innovation. And then, as I said, we'll be showcasing our top five Sova products. Um, there are more than five, but we're going to talk about the five that we commonly use here in the region in the UAE. And then live questions from the audience and close. Okay, and just to give you a bit of backdrop about Sova, uh, some of you might have uh, seen this before if you joined before, but basically the, the, the whole concept of Sova assessment is about combining the best of science and technology. So science from the perspective of using um, tools which are proven to predict performance, uh, which we're doing with our BPS review and also our um, extensive kind of validation studies that we run with our clients. Um, so we're using tools which we know are accurate and that they're specifically designed also for online delivery. Um, we've been working since 2015 with mobile and tablet delivery of our assessments. And we're really sort of continuing to, you know, bring in innovations and uh, market leading innovations, I would say, to the market. Um, and we're combining this with the best of technology. So um, in terms of the platform we're using at the moment, it's highly configurable. Everything's fully virtual, including assessment center, uh, not just psychometrics, and basically creating a very engaging and immersive um, user experience. And then also working with things like AI and machine learning, which we are actively using um, ethically and responsibly, I would say. Uh, but that's something we're trying to introduce to our assessments as well. Uh, just a bit of history um, about Sova, as I mentioned, we were formed uh, back in 2015. So um, our founders and our leadership team and directors are all uh, people who have contributed to um, some of the most well-known test publishers on the market. Uh, we've, we previously built some of the most well-known tools in the market, and we set up Sova in 2015 uh, to continue our journey in terms of uh, changing assessment for good. And that's our current sort of strap line around uh, uh, our new marketing initiative, which is talking about that. And there's lots of information um, in our community um, website if you wanted to take a look. Now, the significant thing which happened for us last year was some investment uh, from Octopus, uh, which happened at the end of last year. Uh, that's enabled us to really begin to scale the business um, in terms of uh, our, our products, our platform, our, um, you know, our employees, etc. And so as of April 21, uh, we had over 2 million candidates on the system. Uh, we've got 82 clients across 20 countries. 
and 45 uh, full-time employees. And this is interesting from a roadmap perspective, uh, from a product um, a software perspective, because we're bringing in lots more innovations. Um, <clears throat> we're doing some work in gamified assessment, um, but specifically trying to make those more predictive than they have traditionally been. And we've got lots of um, different technologies coming through, such as the uh, machine learning algorithm for analysis of video interviews. So just to give you a sort of quick overview uh, of some of our history there. In terms of the, the, the platform that we're using, um, again, you might have seen this before, but just to give you a sense of what we're working with. So we have everything uh, from a psychometric perspective that you'd expect, but then we also have some other tools which we're working with. And this is all wrapped around um, in a single platform uh, where we can have access to the analytics from any of the assessments and use those to make decisions, um, run validation studies, and make you know make the best talent decisions we can. Um, we're using things like in immersive home pages, so it's not just a traditional um, sit down, log in, take an exam type of interface. We're working with technology which enables us to present this in a very different way. Um, and embed things like video interview, the virtual assessment center. So you can take a candidate on a full journey from complete some initial skills and uh, biographical screening questionnaires, complete your personality or cognitive assessment. Maybe it's also SJT, maybe a video interview as well as part of screening, and then move forward into a virtual assessment center day um, where you're investing more of the time uh, from an employer perspective into assessment and then all the all the reports can be integrated um, and the data at the back end so just to give you a sense of that okay we thought we'd just highlight um, some of the trends and things which we we are beginning to see from an innovation perspective so we'll talk about the tools that we are working with which are you know which we consider to be innovations in the market um, but just before we do that, we'll have a look at some of the trends. And I think this, um, this kind of idea of, of uh, the pandemic sort of changing the world of, of work and, you know, changing the demographic of the workforce is, is very much, uh, you can see this in all the publications and all the thought leadership, which is, which is happening at the moment. Um, but obviously, there's the, the, the talent has, has changed. Uh, there's a surplus um, amount of talent in the market. And there's a renewed focus uh, from employers and organizations on how do we manage our talent better? So how do we do more with the talent we have? And how do we recruit slightly differently uh, for the talent that we might need? And obviously, we know about the, the reports from people like uh, the World Economic Forum and McKinsey around the different sorts of skills which are going to be required uh, for the new knowledge economy um, moving forward. So that's into sort of this year, next year, the next five, 10 years, uh, the types of skills that we're going to be recruiting for uh, have changed significantly uh, to keep pace with things like digitalization um, and the changing uh, world of work. Um, there's a renewed focus on assessing different sorts of skills. So some of the soft skills you might, might see um, that are required at different levels, such as creative thinking, um, you know, uh, logical reasoning, um, teamwork and things like that are becoming much more important. So in terms of the trends that we are already seeing this year, but also uh, for the next two years, um, some of the trends that, that we think uh, are important, first one being retention. Um, so how do organizations hold on to the talent they've got, but also to spot who are the high potential people within that talent pool how do we continue to engage people and how do we uh, do different things with career paths and fit people to different career paths and create an employee value proposition um, so retention is a big theme and obviously assessment should play a part of how you retain your top talent and also the wider talent pool within the organization and the second thing related to those World Economic Forum reports are things around skills-based hiring. So um, not just relying on the, the demographic years of experience and college degree 
type of assessment and, and using that as a screening basis. But actually thinking what are the skills really required in this role, uh, this frontline role, this leadership role, whichever one it might be, and then creating an assessment to do that. So we have um, <clears throat> lots of assessments on our platform, which are, which are directly assessing skills, it could be IT literacy skills, it could be coding skills uh, from an IT perspective. It could be, um, you know, the, the ability of a finance person to read a PL and make um, appropriate analysis of that spreadsheet. So there are different things that we need to be doing from a skills based perspective. Uh, thirdly, development. So we're seeing a lot of programs uh, looking at how do we develop the talent we've currently got and how do we do more um, around you know, putting in place learning and development programs. And there's lots of new technology coming through in terms of the L&D programs and the types of, types of online um, learning that are now available and that we've had to all shift to as a result of the, uh, the last year and a half and the, 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 the global pandemic. So there's lots of new innovation coming through there. And we think development is gonna to continue to be an important theme. Uh, fourthly, health and well-being. There's lots uh, in the literature about mental health, um, well-being in the workplace, and obviously, as psychologists, we're interested in that. Uh, so, how to manage stress, how to prevent burnout, um, how to help people uh, be more effective in their roles, and, and make sure that they are paying attention to their mental health, um, and particularly because people have ostensibly been more isolated over the last year and a half. Um, but the, the most important thing, probably from an assessment point of view, is fitting uh, people's preferences and abilities and aptitudes to the types of roles and tasks they're actually going to be doing um, on a daily basis. And that in itself um, is a, a way of managing health and well-being. So being able to fit people to roles and tasks is, is really important from an assessment perspective. And we're sort of continuing to focus on that. And we actually have an assessment um, on our platform at the moment, which looks at um, um, levels of fit to virtual working. So just assessing people for, are they going to be comfortable working in a, a virtual environment uh, with, with, with reduced contact with, with other people? And lastly, um, the other trend that we're seeing is the introduction of new assessment technology. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, that's good for us because that's what we're trying to do. But um, we're seeing lots of organizations and employers thinking about new types of HR tech that they can introduce um, to their organization, both from a hiring perspective, but also a development perspective as well. Looking at things like CRM systems, integrations with applicant tracking systems. So this is a very, you know, very active uh, area for this year and obviously next year as well. Uh, the new technology that's coming through and is now available is extensive um, and sort of helping people to make the right decisions uh, from that point of view. So I think that was that was enough on trends, I think, for now. OK, thank you. So, yeah, so as we said, we're going to talk about now our top five innovative products from Sova. So we're going to focus on the ones that we're really seeing people using here in the UAE and the Middle East. So we're going to sort of go through each one and I'm going to interview John about how clients are using them and how they work and what some of the main features are. Um, as I said, we'll give an overview, but if you have more questions or if you've got some insight in how, into how you've been using these, please let us know. Um, or if you've got, got any questions or any thoughts about them, again, please do write in the box or let us know if you want us to turn your microphone on. So what's our number one product? Well, the interactive homepage. Um, so John, do you want to just give us a quick overview about what this is and what this means? Yeah, so the interactive homepage is just a slightly different way of um, bringing a candidate or an employee through their assessment journey. So <clears throat> rather than asking, say, if a candidate's applying to a job, rather than asking them to log into a number of different links, which have maybe a personality test or a cognitive test, uh, we're saying Here, here's one single landing page. And the context and the messaging that you want to give a candidate will be there um, on that homepage. And any task that you want them to complete, so it could be psychometric tests, could be 
um, biographical questionnaires, um, upload your CV, edit your talent profile, all of that will be available as well. And then also Virtual Assessment Centre is also available uh, via this homepage. So essentially anything we're doing from an assessment perspective can be put on this homepage, um, but it's just a different interface. It's a more engaging interface, I would say. Okay, and what, um, what features would you say or, or what sort of hotspots are clients preferring to, to have on their homepage? You know, what are the most popular ones? Well, a bit of messaging from, uh, say, the hiring manager or the, or the CEO, could be the CEO or the HR director around the context of what they've been asked to do. So a bit of information, hotspots, uh, these, um, these boxes here are the hotspots. So these can be configured in any way you want. Um, but I'd say sort of some welcome context and then some, some next steps context. And then psychometric assessments, um, pretty much, you know, most of our clients are using. And uh, <clears throat> probably the video interview as well. So one of these hotspots can take them through into the, the one-way video interview where they record spot re responses to a series of structured questions. And then the hiring manager can then review those responses and score them at a later date. Uh, so I'd say that'd be the main things. And then obviously our virtual assessment centre, if, if that's part of the process and, and that's required, we can also um, link uh, into the virtual assessment centre and present it on these pages. Okay. And can clients add their own content? And also how easy is it to set this up? Yes, clients can add any content. We can work with any existing exercise content they might have. So if they have role plays or group exercises or case studies they want to add, we can put all of that on the platform. Uh, they, we can brand it in any way, um, any way that clients want. We can add any type of multimedia, um, so any type of video or, or images that you want to add. Um, even links into corporate web websites, uh, things like that. So uh, it's highly flexible, I would say, and usually would take sort of in, in the region of a couple of weeks to, to set it up in terms of the backwards and forwards on the content. Um, but it's, it's generally pretty quick. Okay, so you can have as little or as much information as you like. Okay, no, that's, that's right. great. Um, so yeah, let's, um, just thinking, if we move through each of these, but if people have questions, please do message as we go, but we'll just go through each in turn. So what's the number two product on our list, the second product? So the Hexaco personality model. Um, okay, so do you want to just tell us then a bit about why this is different to the five-factor model of personality and how this is innovative? Yeah, so most of the tools on the market are based on the big five. Um, so the difference with Hexaco um, is that basically you've got this additional honesty, humility factor, uh, which measures basically um, how honest, straightforward um, and, uh, and humble people are. And there's lots of different sub traits which sit under those, but basically it gives the questionnaire more breadth. So as I said, most, most questionnaires on the market, especially the the sort of the ones from big significant uh, uh, publishers were, are based on big five but this just adds extra breadth so, so it means we have effectively 160 question items which we can map onto a client framework and it means that that mapping is, is a little bit more accurate and more comprehensive um, and the other thing to say about the questionnaire is because it was designed um, by our by our founder who, who had previously designed some of the other uh, question as you'd see on the market uh, he wrote it to be very contemporary so <clears throat> it doesn't ask sort of um, slightly obscure questions about whether you like going to see the opera or things like that it very much focuses on um, how people like to behave in the workplace so it, it's contemporary and it's more it's more uh, comprehensive are the, are the two main things about this questionnaire Okay, so can people use this as a straight, straightforward standalone questionnaire and also can they customise it and map it to their competency frameworks and how does that work? Yes, both. So you can just use this as, uh, like you say, a standalone questionnaire. So it has a number of, I mean, we have sort of 10 different report permutations based on the answers to this questionnaire. So you can just, we can plug in and play 
um, within a matter of hours for any client that wants to use this questionnaire. Um, but if, if they want to measure their own uh, competencies or traits, we can also do that. So we can map onto their framework and that again, probably takes a couple of weeks. Uh, there's a validation process we go through with that. Um, you know, we, we follow a scientific process and we, we check the statistical uh, reliability of the new model we're creating each time. Okay, and just final question on this. So how useful is the honesty, humility um, scale? You know, why is this important to find out about a person in this way? Well, because it gives you, as I said, the, the kind of insights into particularly at leadership level, how people are likely to behave um, in terms of, you know, there's a big focus on ethical business practice and integrity, and that becomes more important at senior levels, not to say it's not important at junior levels, but um, the addition of that factor enables us to get a read on uh, how this person is likely to behave um, from an integrity perspective, basically. And it will, you know, it begins to take into account uh, things around sort of pro-social behavior, as we've noted down at the bottom there, um, and any possible sort of uh, negative sort of dark side derailment type of behaviors. Um, it's not measuring, uh, you know, it's not measuring clinical traits, but it, it, it will give you an idea of whether there might be a propensity for unethical business practices, particularly do, during times of stress. Uh, which I think most organizations are under at the moment. So um, it can be really useful for us to get a, get a handle on uh, those types of factors. Okay, thank you. Um, and let's look at number three. So virtual assessment centers. I think this probably describes what it is. Um, but yeah, what, how would you describe this over virtual assessment center? And how is this different to others that are on the market? Well, there's a, I think there's only a few others on the market, but basically our assessment, virtual assessment center is all fully integrated with the wider psychometric or biographical assessment, which you might be doing. So there's all the data you might gather from a virtual assessment center, but then there's also the pre-screening um, or assessment data that you might have, which can all be weaved together to create things like overall scores, um, create integrated candidate and assessor reports so i'd say that's the main thing the integration of the platform so everything can be done off one platform uh, you can set up psychometrics you can set up assessment center and you can control that from one single point that's the main that's the main sort of differentiator i would say um, and also you know it's been designed by us and we we understand assessment um, you know we're, we're not sort of a tech company who've sort of forayed into assessment uh, we're very much starting from this is what we used to do face to face on a daily basis and now we've taken it online so yeah they're the main things okay and again how easy is this to set up so let's say i run a, a regular face-to-face -face assessment center it works well how could i actually use this technology to make my process more efficient and how quickly can i set this up yeah, so it depends on whether we're designing exercises or whether you already have exercises. So <clears throat> either way, that it all has to be digitalized and put onto the system, tested. Um, probably we run a pilot assessment center. That's typically what we do with clients. So, I mean, it's probably it's probably a, a timeline of around four four to five weeks. I would say, depending on the amount of exercises and the existing content. If we have to design exercises, it might add some more time because obviously we need to, uh, you know, typically you'd look at maybe four or five days for a case study, for example. And if you wanted multiple versions of that, it will add more time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's relatively straightforward. Um, the, once the exercises are in, it's, it's a case of um, adding the different uh, sort of scheduling aspects to the assessment day and then testing it on the homepage. Okay, so actually, if a client had the materials all ready to go, they perhaps had a role play and an interview, these could just be uploaded straight away, and they could use a scheduling tool and, and automate their process. So that part could be done quite quickly. Exactly. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, great. Again, if anyone has any questions or thoughts, or if anyone is using a virtual assessment centre and has any feedback, do let us know. 
Um, and I can see here you've got the invitation emails are sent. So is everything sent from this central point from the system? And how do we review data? Exactly. So all the scheduling and the assessment invites are managed from the back end of the portal. Um, and the data will be available in that portal as well after the assessment centre. And it can be reviewed and washed up and moderated as, as required. Okay. But I guess, yeah, the wash up time is going to be more efficient and significantly reduced if, if all of the data is there and the calculations have been done. Okay, great. Um, let's look at number four. So video interviewing. Um, again, it sort of sounds as it says. So yeah, do you want to give us an overview, John, of how the SOVA video interviewing can work? Yeah, so you can either run one way video interviews. So um, you ask candidates to record their responses in their own time. And then <clears throat> you, you basically score those responses. Um, and typically you might use that as part of a screening process. Um, so you haven't actually invested, other than the time to score the videos, you haven't actually done a two-way video at that point with them. Or you can do the, do the video interviewing as part of an assessment center um, or as a sort of live interview where you can uh, use the platform again to just connect an assessor or a hiring manager with the candidates. Okay, so you can do this two ways. And then what about the information? So let's say a candidate records the, the answers. So can a hiring manager log in at any time and review it? Or um, how does this part work? How can we access what they're saying? Exactly, so there's basically two ways of doing it. You can either access it via the platform, just go straight in, go to the candidate you're interested in, go to their video interviews and score them, or um, we can send out unique URLs for each candidate to the hiring manager who can then just click on that URL and it will take them through to the video interview for them to score. Um, and typically it's one to five rating scale uh, by competency or criteria assessed. Um, and there's other lots of features around setting time limits and different, different countdown and timer options. Uh, so again, the platform's quite, quite flexible in that sense. Um, and we are working with the with the algorithms to automate the scoring of these interviews in, in the sense of turning the video or the speech from the video into text, which is then analyzed by the algorithm, which would then provide a score. Um, but as with all other aspects of the, the AI, uh, we still want a hiring manager or a psychologist to moderate those scores. We wouldn't just accept the score you know, based because obviously machine learning is iterative and it needs to um, it needs to sort of improve over time. So we wouldn't just rely on that, but it, it's, a, it's a way of just reducing the amount of time a hiring manager might have to spend uh, scoring these things, especially if, if they're at screening stage, you don't want to spend too much time, um, invest too much time as an organization into, uh, you know, going through thousands of videos because it's not practical sometimes. Okay, so actually, if uh, if somebody is using, say, Zoom or Teams to do their interviewing, they could actually quite easily use this product and sort of set, send out autom automated scheduling invites and so on, and then manage the information coming back. So you could look at your mobile and um, see who's completed the interview or who needs to go. So yeah, so we could put this on quite quickly. Well, the other thing to say about it as well is it, it's free. Okay. <laughs> um, we, we don't, if you, if you buy a subscription from uh, Sova, um, an assessment subscription, we include the video interview for free now. Okay. So we're not actually charging clients for this technology. <clears throat> so if you, if you had a license for say 500 um, psychometric assessments, you can include the video interview alongside the psychometric as an additional screening uh, tool uh, or assessment tool um, so yeah that, that that's a really good benefit of it and I think lots of clients are using this at the moment it's it's very popular for okay. obvious reasons so yeah if anyone wants to have a look at this or sort of set this up do let us know and we can get this organized for you okay great and then number five so the online dashboard and data um, visualization so yeah is this a uh, Dashboard, do you want to talk us through this and how we use the scores and some of the main features? 
Yeah, so the this is the back end of the platform. So this is what you would have access to as a client. Um, and basically what you can see in a single point uh, of reference is all the results of the different assessments. So you might have, it might not be too clear on the screen there, but you might have, these are psychometric assessments here. Uh, so you might have some scores associated with these. So percentile or one to 100 scores. And then you might have some exercises. So <clears throat> a BEI is a behavioral event interview. So it's like a competency-based interview, but a little bit more focused on behavior. Um, role play business case. So you'd also have scores from these. <clears throat> but basically what we can do is we can standardize all these scores on a similar scale So and present an overall score. So here you've got a competency total, which is out of five. And it's a decimal place uh, competency total. And it's, so it's mathematical averaging um, across the different assessments uh, to produce a competency total. Uh, we can also set up different weights for the different assessment components if that's required. And lots of different things we can do with algorithms uh, to basically get you to, you know, either one, two or three or however many you want um, overall scores, which are going to tell you something useful about the the process you're running so it could be you know selection of the the you know the top 25 candidates uh, from a from an assessment center or it could be uh, you know spotting of high potential uh, selection of people onto a high um, a learning and development program or whatever so this dashboard basically gives you all the analytics which is also available um, you can download any of the data straight away uh, you can generate all the reports associated with all of these assessments. Um, if we do a project level report, we can have an integrated view of all of this assessment data. So it would include psychometric scores, psychometric narrative, assessor narrative with regards to exercises, and then maybe some other narrative which we've which we've created uh, relating to the overall score. So this platform gives you data. Um, it also enables you to add participants, send invites, uh, set up assessors, create schedules for assessment center. So really from a client perspective, this dashboard um, and this, this platform access gives you everything you need to do from an assessment perspective. And it's all in one place, which is really useful. Okay, thank you. So it's the real sort of hub of the assessment process. Um, and then you can, I guess you can, add sort of yeah. all of your assessments um sort of the whole process can't you everything to it um and yeah what feedback have you had from clients in the region using this i think you know people clients have sort of recognized this is fairly unique in the market in terms of um having everything in one place there are and there's one or two other sort of virtual assessment center providers out there but to have them integrated with the psychometric and the overall view of an integrated report um, and to have a, a platform which is all set up, um, you know, specifically in the sort of the hiring market, but also the development uh, market as well, um, is quite a unique thing in the market. And it's easy to use. It's not difficult. Um, most people would be able to navigate this without any troubles at all. We also provide training on how to how to navigate, run the extracts, add candidates, send invites, etc. So I think it's intuitive and it, and it's easy to use. I, I think are the main things, and it's um it gives you what you need uh, from an assessment perspective. Okay, and just final question on it: Is it live data? So if there's a new candidate completing the assessment, does it change and update scores and so on? Yeah, this will update in real time. So if you're running an assessment center um you know the scores will come through into the dashboard in in real time you have to you know refresh every couple of couple of seconds but um uh that's that's no problem uh so if you're an administrator you can you know you can take data extracts or you can you can edit the sort of the the recommendation or the pass fail rules um in real time so yeah that's a really good feature as well yeah, and how easy is it to rank candidates in order? Well, it's automated. So if we've set up the overall scoring, um, you can. it's simply a case of taking the extract and then just sorting the data 
however you want uh lowest to highest highest to lowest so uh, that that's all effectively automated apart from a filter that you'd have to run on the extract but you can also you can also sort all these results by highest score per the activity which you see here so you could actually give a candidate just say on a very simple level three ability tests and a personality have an overall score and then That's this sort of ranking order as they complete it so you can see who's got the highest score for either a development program or for selection exactly right yeah okay That's and it. then the assessment center exercises as well that they their scores will appear on here as well and you can do the same exactly right yeah yeah okay great I think that's a good overview for our top five. And I think we've just got a final part to mention. Yeah, did you want to talk about this? Yeah, I mean, th this is just to give you a an idea of our new sort of um, data visualization on the dashboard. So um, you've got the dashboard here, which is obviously all sort of numbers based, but if you want to visualize that a bit more, um, this is the, uh, we have this in in uh, test at the moment. We're going to make it live onto production um, shortly. Uh, but basically, it just enables you to visualize the data in different ways. You can filter and customize reports. Um, have have a different look at um, you know how people are scoring, completion rates, that type of thing, um, and just have a look at overall scores, competency scores. So it's a really nice feature of the platform, which is which is becoming online. Uh, in the next in the next few weeks okay thank you and i think we just wanted to touch on this part i know it's it's perhaps not innovative you know 360s and 180s have been around for you know years now but i think um what we really wanted to say here is actually we have these assessments um they're online and again, the scores from them can be accessed in the same way as the other assessments. So we've taken something that's quite traditional in focus and put it into an innovative system. Um, anything to add here, John, or how are clients using 360 and 180 as part of the assessment processes? Yeah, well, I was going to, I mean, 360 works in the way you'd expect it. Um, we've got we've got a sort of core bank of 38 competencies, which we which we use, but you can you can pick and choose any of those 38 competencies um, in terms of the things that you're assessing. Um, so, that, so firstly, the 360 is quite customizable and flexible. Uh, but secondly, it doesn't have to be a 360. You could run a 180, which, which usually is a self rating and a manager rating. So you get this sort of 180 view, not the sort of the whole view, but it's very useful that 180 uh, for L&D programs or, or, or even high potential. Um, because it's, it's focusing in on how do you see yourself and how does your manager see you. Uh, so the 180 is, is very popular. Um, <clears throat> we can also run line manager surveys. So just a simple, uh, that's just a one way uh, view. So it's not even self rating. It's just a manager rating of, of employee competence uh, or, or you know, skills competence or, or behavioral competencies. So that's also a nice feature that we can, we can also do. Okay, so all of this can be added online to the system and then all results come through um, in, in, in the dashboard in the same way. Okay, great. And I think we just got this final slide just to really sort of emphasize the AI in the assessments. Um, do you want to elaborate further, John? Well, the video to text content analysis, that's the one I talked about a little bit for the video interviews. So we're not trying to read body language or any other um, you know, an unproven aspect of uh, what candidates might be doing on a video, but we're, we're taking their speech and uh, we're taking their speech from the video and then translating that into a content analysis of what they're actually saying. And then the, the algorithm will uh, produce a score uh, based on, th you know, it's, it's things like keyword searches around how many times they, they relate uh, their response to certain competencies or behavioral criteria, which we might have, and then that would have produced a score. So uh, this technology is, you know, th th we are using this uh, with some clients at the moment. So this video to text content analysis is one thing. Um, as I mentioned, we're not trying to sort of read into 
competence by looking at body language or anything like that. Um, the the real time validation is around uh, the validation of an assessment, uh, linking that back to job performance. So um, as more data is available in the database, it will update um, the validation of, of the assessment and make any adjustments which might be necessary. Um, but again, uh, a human would have to sort of, or a, you know, a professional would have to um, make the judgment on whether to accept uh, any changes it's, it's suggesting. Um, but it will continuously look at sort of different points, three or six month points around linking the, the data back to job performance and things like that. So it will say, you know, th these items are valid uh, for, the, for, the, the, for the purpose you're using them for if, if, if you have a sort of customized assessment. Um, and the enhanced scoring algorithms, again, um, it might look, the, the machine learning algorithm will look across the assessment to see whether um, there's any kind of adverse impact from uh, different aspects which might appear within a scoring algorithm and then make any make suggestions around, around adjustments to that algorithm. So it's just a sort of uh, real-time ongoing updates to the assessment. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And then if we go to the next slide. So just we thought if anyone you know has any comments um, or wanted a discussion, that's fine. Or if anyone wants to contact us afterwards, or, or just to go away and to think about some of these points for reflection. So, really, we're just interested in you know what assessment trends are people currently seeing in their workplace, and also what new assessment products would they like to use. Um, so yeah, does anyone have any thoughts on these or or questions about anything that we've discussed today? Or as I said, yeah, please do sort of write in afterwards or, you know, if you've got, got anything to share, um, we're, we're very interested. We, we like to know about products, innovation, technology, psychology. Um, so I think we'll just move on and close. I'm conscious of the time. Um, so just to wrap up, if we, if we go to the next slide. So just the next step. So if anyone would like a demonstration of any of these products or of the system or wants to speak to us um, about their assessment processes, please do get in touch. Our next event is on the 23rd of August and we'll be back in the UAE for this one. And we also have our Sova community, which we've been discussing. And this is a great portal of information so by registering the community you have access to lots of training lots of content materials other industry experts and what we just encourage is sort of sharing of information so this is actually global so this will be um you know sort of worldwide um so yeah if you want to join the community yeah let us know and if anyone has any questions again please do get in touch this was just about our community we can send some information and yeah just to really again you know thank you thank you for listening thank you for um turning up to these events um we really enjoy doing them please give us any insights if there's um particular topics that you want to hear or you want us to cover or if you've got any questions um or if you missed an episode missed a month and you would like the on-demand video we can send out links as well so please do get in touch event with any queries or questions that you might have and anything final from you john no that's great thanks for joining and um yeah i hope you found it interesting yeah thank you very much and see you next month <laughs>